I'm Dr. David Fakonle, and I am the Executive Director of Woomware Productions. Woomware Productions is a social change performing arts company. It utilizes primarily theater, but many other forms of performing arts, such as singing, dancing, African drumming. We even include some visual arts as well, as well as cultural practices. So it's an organization that is grounded in African and indigenous philosophy. Uh, we are unapologetic, and we utilize the performing arts for healing, uh, primarily black and brown youth, and by extension, their families and their communities. And all of this is focused around the Baltimore metropolitan area. Something that I continue to realize as I get older, I've always been around the performing arts. I've always been around African cultural practices. So... As I got older, I eventually got connected with Woomworth uh, at 14 years old. A lot of my friends from a, another performing arts company um, kind of matriculated over to Woomworth, so I followed along, and I never left. So whether being on stage as an actor or a drummer or a singer or a dancer and now transitioning to a more administrative role, Woomworth has been a big part of my life uh, for most of my life now that I really look back at it. And it's just shown how powerful arts and culture are when it comes to health and well-being. That's something that I continue to learn as a public health researcher. Wound work was exclusively in person up until the pandemic. So having to make the transition to a virtual space was a challenge at first. Our primary concern was wouldn't we still have that transformative power? Would we still be able to make the connection with youth, families, communities, whoever our audience may be, behind a computer screen. It took some time to figure it out, but the answer is yes, we could, and we did. So now Woomworth recognizes that it must have a virtual presence, even as we transition to primarily in-person programming again, because it allows us to share our story with a larger audience beyond Baltimore, even beyond the DMV area. And that's what we want to do. We know that our approach as, again, unapologetically black, as unapologetically indigenous as it is, tells a story that everyone can resonate with. And we've demonstrated that too. When it comes to the difficult issues within public health, and there are many, it's great to be grounded in a fundamental understanding of everyone's humanity. And I think that's what Woomworth does better than anyone. And arts and culture is such a powerful vessel by which you can do that. So it's meant to be theater. It's meant to be African drumming. It's meant to be singing. It's meant to be dancing. Sometimes the best way to get the message across to encourage the pro-social healthy behavior is through creative expression. And that is Woomworth's wheelhouse. So being able to demonstrate all that in a virtual presence to Expand our family to increase our family is, is, I think, a necessity now more than ever. I've been so fortunate and blessed to intentionally operate in two spaces, arts and culture and public health. I speak the language of both. So I know fairly well how to convey what a creative expression can do for a person's health and well-being. Using that framework to use theater and performing arts as a whole to address the the root causes of, of substance use disorder or uh, another diagnosable mental disorder or just the challenges of society living in this city. We've been doing it this whole time. And, and now we've had this certainly financial opportunity to expand that work and to demonstrate it to a different level with a specific audience for a specific public health reason. So that's the tie-in of, again, the arts and culture and the, and the public health. It's what drew me to wound work. That's what drew my friends to wound work. It was a place where the black kids could tell their truth. The black kids from all around Baltimore City, the different neighborhoods that we represented, the different circumstances that we brought to the stage to not just tell our truth, but to write a script based on our truth, to create movement based on our truth, to sing songs based on our truth, to be mindful of the history 
that dictates our truth. There weren't and still aren't as many spaces as necessary to house that kind of healing and to house that kind of storytelling. That's what one work has been for a quarter of a century, and it's incredible to say that <laughs> if, you, if you know the story. Uh, but people have their stories about wound work. Wound work, <laughs> it almost feels like it's in the atmosphere of Baltimore, and that's what I want to continue for people to always know that if you're looking for a place to tell your story, to share your truth, those truths that people may not want to hear, those circumstances that are easily swept under the rug, wound work is always the place that will cultivate and encourage the telling of people's truths. That's our legacy now. That's what I always want Woolworths legacy to do. So it comes down to what are the policies, what are the practices, what are the conversations, who's at the table to make sure that we are truly implementing a framework of equity, which can lead to equality, which can lead to liberation. And that's what wound work is all about. That's the work that I do because that's the goal that I strive for and that we strive for. It's possible, and it's a challenge, and it's complex. All, all these things are true at the same time. But it never stops us from doing our part with the life that we have, because that's all we can do. So it's, a, it's an eternal struggle. It's a beautiful struggle because Baltimore is worth it. So to get back to answering your question, why does Baltimore need a boost? Because Baltimore deserves it. The people of Baltimore deserve it. The people are what make this city. And I can promise you there are more people who strive for the best in humanity than don't. Is that the story that's being told? No. Personally, that makes me angry. It upsets me because I am from Baltimore. I choose to stay in Baltimore because this is home. I can't think of a better place to do the things that I do than Baltimore. It's the ultimate proving ground for doing something right and doing something that involves the people in a genuine way. They'll let you know. So Baltimore is always in need of a boost. The people are always in need of a boost. And those who are doing the work for the good of the people, for the good of humanity, are the ones who need the boost the most.